Hello everybody and welcome to Nathan on Shuffle and to my latest episode of New Music Weekly. Uh, this is the show where I give you guys the top 5 prog headlines for the week, talk about the top 5 prog singles that I've come across, and give you updates for the channel and what's happened recently and what's coming up in the near future. So hopefully you guys will be interested in this edition. I've got some pretty big items that I'm excited to talk about. Uh, today is November 12th, 2022 at time of filming. And this is my weekend news for you guys. So I wanted to start with the biggest headline for me, at least, from this past week that I've been super excited about, especially over the last couple days. Um, this is the announcement of Cruise to the Edge 2024. Uh, their website is up, their artist announcements are starting, and it seems like it's going to be quite a big event and a grand time. And really, for the first time, I'm really contemplating going to this cruise. You know, it's it's been difficult to uh, have to sit them out knowing how much people love them, how many great artists are a part of it. You know, all of my favorite bands seem to always be part of these shows, but it's always been so expensive and it's difficult with scheduling and timing and all of this kind of stuff because we tend to schedule our own vacations around that time and it's just not really feasible for us financially in a lot of scenarios, a lot of travel and a lot of things to do, which I'm sure is the case for many people watching this as well. Uh, but this is the, the year where we might actually work on attending, you know, we get some time to save up some money and hopefully be part of the cruise and maybe see some of you guys, if any of you are attending on board, that would be really cool. But um, this cruise, it, there is quite a lot of lead time here, maybe more than normal, because the cruise is all the way out on March 8th to 13th, 2024. So they're skipping 2023 entirely um, beyond the like stretch of break uh, because of the pandemic, you know, I'm not counting that. Of course, that was a longer stretch between cruises. But before that, you know, usually they didn't take this long of a break between, but it sounds like they need some time to get ready and they wanted it to be at the first part of the year. And it didn't make sense to push it for 2023. So now here we are looking at 2024, which is actually better for me personally, just it gives more time to save up and to prepare and things like that. So I'm excited about it. It's going to be aboard the Norwegian Pearl, visiting o Ocho Rios, Jamaica, and Georgetown Grand Cayman. Uh, I believe it's sailing out of Miami, Florida. So that should be a really fun time. And they've already announced several bands. They've announced, I believe, 16 bands so far. Sounds like they're still primed to announce many more as well. Um, but already on the docket, they announced first Flying Colors, which is really exciting for me. I love Flying Colors. I was kind of thinking Flying Colors might be done as a band because I've heard a lot of things about Steve Morse. He's had to step away from Deep Purple. And, you know, I believe his wife is having some health issues. So I thought maybe he was low key retiring from music a little bit, but maybe Flying Colors is the right outlet for, for him. Uh, Mike clarified, Mike Portnoy on Twitter or somewhere on social media that S Steve Morse is definitely included in this lineup. You know, it's the five, five guys that are always part of the lineup. They're always going to be there. So uh, really exciting to hear Flying Colors. Maybe that means new music from Flying Colors is around the corner, maybe around the time of this cruise as well is my hope. But some other big names... Um, we've got Haken on board the cruise, The Flower Kings, Steve Hackett, Symphony X, a great progressive metal band, Lonely Robot from John Mitchell is going to be there. Some interesting uh, older school, Griffin is going to be on board, PFM, uh, Queensryche was a cool announcement as well, Martin Barr, Protocol, uh, Adrian Ballou is going to be there, Baraka, uh, Airbag, and really the two headlining uh, bands announced so far were Marillion, who have been on the cruise previously, a somewhat of a bucket list band, especially as I've been getting into Marillion recently to be able to uh, uh, see on the cruise here. So I'm really excited uh, about that one. <laughs> and then to me, the big headline is Big Big Train being part of the cruise. This is their first uh, time being on the cruise. First time, I believe, doing a show um, over this way, you know, in the U.S. or U.S. adjacent. So that should be really uh, an incredible experience to be able to see them on board the cruise. I'm sure that's encouraging a lot of big, big train fans to consider going on this cruise because that's a big, major event to have a band like that on this cruise. So uh, already primed to be a special event with just so many incredible bands that I really want to see live and it would be hard to pass up. So we're really considering it, me and Jana. We're really pretty much 
pretty much going to go at this point, you know, especially after these artist announcements. And I, like I said, I believe there's more to come. So that was the big headline news that I wanted to spend some some good chunk of time on because I know there's many people watching the channel who are excited about Cruise to the Edge, who've been in previous years, who go faithfully year by year, and just thought this would be cool to talk about and to hear your thoughts in the comments below as well about if you're excited about this lineup which bands are you looking most forward to and what other bands do you think are are ready to be announced and could be also fun additions as well so um item number two on my prog news headline uh list we've got peter gabriel reveals uk and europe tour dates uh, around forthcoming album io um so this is Peter Gabriel, there's been a lot of talk about his upcoming solo album. It's one of those type of albums where people joke around because it's taking so long. It's like, is it really going to ever happen? You know, people thought that way about Tool as well when they had such a long stretch between albums. And Peter Gabriel has a bit of a, a reputation for that, for long stretches of time between albums and promising albums, but not delivering. But it seems like every... Every news item about Peter Gabriel is like a little bit of a step forward towards a possible new album, but this is exciting news on its own. Peter Gabriel announcing plans for a 2023 tour across the UK and Europe next spring. This is his uh, first shows outside of North America since 2014's Back to Front tour, celebrating the era defining album So. So it's been quite a while since he's done shows like this, so people are really excited. I know there's a lot of talk about, you know, maybe some fairly expensive prices for these tours. Um, but a lot of people are really excited about it because Peter Gabriel, of course, is a legend um, in the Prague world uh, for his front man uh, stint with the Genesis, of course, and just a very cool solo career where he's really delved into some artistic proggy directions as well in a different format. So it's he's really well regarded by all in the prog community and so it's really exciting to see that he's touring that there's going to be some new material out there and hopefully this forthcoming album that has been promised will actually be released at some point in the future so hopefully we'll get some details about the album and that'll be a future news item at least here's to hoping for that so uh that should be a fun tour so check that out if you're in the area for for peter gabriel of course dates are are online and you could check those out if he's in your area and you can uh, afford to go. That would be a fun time. All right, item number three. I, I wanted to bring this in. Uh, I wasn't able to do a show last weekend, so I wanted to bring in a little bit of news from, from the previous week that I wasn't able to talk about yet. And this is one of those items. So at Prague headline number three, we've got Stephen Wilson curating a new compilation called Intrigue, Progressive Sounds in UK Alternative Music, 1979 to 1989. I uh, really thought this was a cool thing. I love Stephen Wilson, of course, um, and not just for his own music, which, of course, I'm a major fan of his solo career and of Porcupine Tree, but I like him as just a champion for great artistic, creative music. You know, he has such a, a wealth of knowledge about previous bands and music history and things like that and always brings out interesting, more obscure type of music out from the background into more of a forefront. And I think that's somewhat what he's trying to do here is highlight this era of music, at least for prog fans, that sometimes gets disregarded because, you know, you had the classic prog of the 70s that everyone loved and it was actually a popular genre with bands such as Yes and Genesis, Jethro Tull, Pink Floyd, all of those great uh, progressive bands, but that sort of died away at the end of the 70s and through the 80s, only to be revived in a smaller, more underground way later in the 90s and, for and forward from there. So this is a somewhat blank period for me at least it was of like well this is the period where not much prog was being produced of course there was some neo prog bands like Marillion who were really hearkening back to the styles of of Genesis and so forth but not much in terms of of like popular interesting music being produced but here's Stephen Wilson to kind of prove that wrong with a really expansive selection of a lot of really cool UK alternative music uh, groups that were playing proggier types of music, you know, progressive spirit in this British music 
Um, artists include Wire, XTC, The Stranglers, Ultravox, The Darudi Column, Cocktail Twins, Kate Bush, Tears for Fears, and many more being released through Edel uh, Demon Records on February 10th next year. So a big giant 4 CD, 7 LP box set that should be a lot of fun for fans of that era or people like me who just want to explore a, 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 a portion of music history that just escapes me a little bit and that I've wanted to know a little bit more about. So I'm really excited to, to look at this curated collection and see what what I might enjoy from it that I didn't know about previously. So thanks for Stephen Wilson and his work on that. So uh, prog news item number four, Simon Collins announces new prog out for E-Molecule with Kelly Nordstrom. Now, uh, Simon Collins is, of course, uh, related to Phil Collins, uh, was a member of the band Dimensionaut, which was a really popular neo-prog group that came out, I, I think, it was probably about 10 years ago now. Uh, they only released one album and then broke up, unfortunately. Uh, Dave Kersner was a part of that, and he's gone on to do his own solo stuff and play with a lot of other uh, modern new prog bands, but... Uh, Simon Collins has been a little bit absent in the new prog scene, but here we are with a new group. Um, this should be fun with Simon Collins and Kelly Nordstrom, who are both members of, of Sound of Contact. Sound of Contact is the band name. Dimension Out was the album they came out with, just to clarify. I, I think I misspoke there, but uh, Sound of Contact is the band uh, that came out with that release that featured Simon Collins and Dave Kersner and Kelly Nordstrom. And now they're coming back, Simon Collins and uh, Kelly Nordstrom, with this band E-Molecule releasing an album called The Architect on Inside Out Music on February 10th next year. So we're already starting to see a slate of releases for next year, which is really, really a lot of fun. So that should be cool to, to look forward to. I, uh, the first single is out, E-Molecule. It's like uh, same as the band name. Uh, it's a it's a bigger, longer, 10-minute expanded piece, uh, a little bit heavier, you know, uh, somewhat reminded me of like Tool and, and some of those types of things, a bit of a, a metallic influence, but, uh, but definitely with the prog uh, really strong in there, a really cool instrumental. Uh, so it's not totally instrumental, I don't believe, but a a lot of instrumental sections to it, you know, very expanded piece. So that should be a fun uh, album to check out when it comes out. So something I'm keeping on my radar, of course, that E-Molecule track is on my prog singles list. So check that out in the description below. And number five, um, Clone is re revealed their new album title and artwork for their upcoming album. Another new album coming out next year. So once again, getting that slate of new albums coming out, which is always good for me. You know, nice to know there's a good uh, future of albums that I can look forward to. This one is coming out on K-Scope on February 10th. Um, the new album is called Meanwhile. Um, so that should be a really cool one. They're, they're just, they're gaining some acclaim clone. So I'm really interested in their uh, rise to prominence in the prog genre. They're French art rockers, not totally full blown like symphonic prog, but more of a subdued, more alternative style prog in my mind. But they were really popular at the latest Cruise to the Edge. They blew a lot of people away there, I heard. Um, so people are really into them right now and they're uh, really exciting and, and had a recent single called Within Reach that I featured on a previous uh, episode that you can go check out. And so uh, really interesting. I'm really excited to check out this new record and see what direction the band is going in. Uh, should be really, really great music. So just wanted to bring that to people's attention. And so now I have a bunch of prog singles to talk about. That's the next section of this show of uh, some cool new singles that have been recently released. I did want to turn your attention. I don't, I know it's probably not everyone's favorite, but I do create these Spotify playlists that I really curate specifically for the channel. And I've created a new one, kind of an offshoot from an existing one, where I feature all these prog singles that I'm talking about in these shows, at least the ones that are available on Spotify. So if you want another avenue, instead of looking in the description and clicking on YouTube links and so forth, um, you could also follow my Spotify playlist and I'll insert all of these prog singles as they come out into that list, at least the latest 
50 or so that I've been talking about on this show. So another fun way to, to keep in touch with newer prog music, which is part of the the point of the show that I'm trying to, to get across. But on my list this week for prog singles, we have David Lungden, uh, The Treachery of Memory. David Lungden, of course, just recently released his solo album, Door One. Uh, this is actually a bonus track that isn't on the main album. I believe it's on like a Japanese special edition version of the album, but not on the regular release um, from the U.S. and Europe and all of those areas. So it's it's a special bonus track uh, that was recorded during spring 2021 in the same sessions as Door One, but David specified that he wanted this song to be available as a bonus track after the release of the album. So here it is, and they're releasing it. It's on streaming services. It's on YouTube, as you can see in the link below. It's a really cool, sweet little song that I think really accompanies the Door One album really well and showcases, once again, David's incredible talent. So I wanted to point your attention towards that song. Uh, like I mentioned, E-Molecule uh, track is also on the list down below, so check that one out. Um, that is a really cool expanded prog track. Uh, number three, I wanted to mention Dom Damanek uh, and their song Americana is out there. Recently announced a new album upcoming next year as well called Making Shore. Uh, so that should be cool. Coming out January 13th, 2023 on GEP. Uh, this is their third album. They're more uh, a bit jazzier than your normal prog, I think. They go in a very jazzy direction, but still have a lot of the hallmarks of your classic prog sound as well, featuring Guy Manning and Merrick Arnold. So it's <clears throat> a really cool band. They also, Sean Timms is a, a producer, at least, of the album, so uh, his production is over the course of this album as well. So uh, really some interesting prog people involved in the record should be a cool album to check out so I wanted to put the single down below to that one uh a prog single number four I have wheels impervious they released a three-track EP uh this week so check that one out the it's called rumination but this was the final track from it impervious which is a really cool track they're more heavy prog inspired by tool and really, really a good band on the rise just recently signed to uh, Inside Out Records. So they have a, a big career ahead of them, I believe. And so I wanted to highlight them and that new release. And then, of course, uh, adding another Devin Townsend track to our prog singles list. He released a video of for Heartbreaker, which is a really fabulous track from the recent uh, album Lightwork. So those are my prog singles. And now for updates for the channel itself. And talking about Devin Townsend, I just did a review this week of Devin Townsend's Lightwork. And I also included my thoughts on Nightwork, which is the accompanying sort of bonus album that comes with it. So uh, please check out my thoughts on that. I really loved the record. I'm not a huge Devin Townsend fan, at least not yet. He's sort of a new artist for me that I'm uncovering and discovering. So uh, maybe more to come in my exploration of Devin Townsend, but this was a really cool step for me in the journey of discovering his music. You know, I know this is a bit of a lighter project for him and he's more into the more heavier, intense, you know, death metal tech metal type of stuff, but I really like this side of his sound, this lighter uh, side that he explored on this album, so I really recommend that album and checking out the review for that. I also did a top five, top five prog epics of the 1990s, got some good uh, feedback from that one, a lot of people giving their lists and introducing me to a lot of cool prog epics that I didn't include in mine, so really check that one out if you're interested in my picks for top ep epics of the 1990s, or if you want to share your list in the comments of that video would be really appreciated. Um, upcoming, more Prog Song Sunday with Jana, uh, more, more top fives to come as well. Uh, might be crafting somewhat of a fantasy prog band in my next top five as a little bit of a tease. Um, so those are really the things to expect. And I'm doing a, a lot of uh, writing up reviews for some uh, prog albums that have recently been coming out for an upcoming show, which will probably come out not next week, but the week after a big roundup of all of the big prog releases over the last month or two. Should be a lot of fun that I'm really excited to talk about some really good gems of a prog album of prog albums in that list and just continuing to listen through all the albums that have come out this year it's been a really fabulous year for prog I'm trying to list re-listen to all these albums to really narrow in on a list of my favorite albums of the year so that's a fun project that I'm working towards that you'll see 
uh, come to fruition towards the end of the year and late later December. Some big list type shows of my favorite songs of the year, my favorite albums of the year, and all of that stuff. I really have fun doing that. So that is what you can expect on Nathan on Shuffle. So thank you guys for joining me on today's episode. Really enjoy doing these. It's a lot of fun. Uh, really hope you guys are enjoying the series as well. And I hope to catch you in a future episode. So keep enjoying the music out there, guys. Thanks. Bye. Bye.